All right, everybody. How's it going, everyone? We are on day two of Sinister CyberCon. Second panel up. Uh, my name is Brian Jones. I am the executive producer of Sinister Creature Con, uh, Northern California Sacramento Horror uh, Convention. And I have the pleasure to sit down with uh, one of the most influential makeup artists of our time, I believe. Uh, somebody that definitely influenced myself uh, and influenced the love of what Sinister Creature Con is all about, which is the practical makeup effects application. Uh, so before bringing him on, I just got to just list over some of his uh, amazing awards. Four-time Academy Award winner for Bram Stoker's Dracula, Mrs. Dalfire, The Curious Case of Bijamoma, and recently the movie Vice. Technical Achievement Award as well. Saturn Award, two-time winner of that with Hannibal and the Curious Case of Benjamin Buttman as well. Makeup Artist and Hairstylist Guild Award for Bicentennial Man. Uh, Gleason, Vice, and then in 2018, he won, uh, was awarded the Lifetime Achievement Award. Just slightly uh, very well known in his industry. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to bring in Mr. Greg Cannon. Hello. Hello, Hello Greg. Everyone. How are you? Good. How are you? Good, good. I appreciate you uh, sitting down with us, man. How are you adjusting with uh, all this shelter in place? And like you said earlier when we were talking, you've never done a virtual con and you know that makes two of us to be honest so this is uh something new for everyone so how, how are you adjusting with everything nothing i can do i'm locked away i'm being safe that's all i can do i'm old now so i gotta be careful you know <laughs> gotcha yeah <laughs> so yeah, it's, i'm it's gonna a be here a while i know i'm gonna be here a long time so I feel you. I definitely, it, it's definitely a weird uh, thing that we're in right now. And uh, luckily we have these uh, options to be able to do something like this yeah, uh, virtually cool. to um, to meet everybody, to kind of see the fans. We're going to have some fan questions popping in later uh, on throughout the, the panel here. Uh, one thing I wanted to jump into, first of all, congratulations on Vice. I got to watch that movie uh, recently and was uh, one blown away by the performances of the film. But um, I'm going to go into more on that but congratulations on that newest win thank you no it was uh, it, it, i've been kind of lucky like once every 10 years i get one so <laughs> and i was pretty shocked and pretty it was pretty cool at my age i can still do that and get that absolutely absolutely it was a, it was a fantastic uh one fantastic application that you did uh, which we'll go into a little bit more. And that's something that I want to really focus on uh, during this panel is, is the whole entire aging process. But before we jump at that, there is something that you influenced me when I was very small that you're not aware of because this is our first meeting, but it wasn't actually what you apply, but it was what you were in. Uh, when I was a kid, the movie that really got me into, and I call it a movie, though, it was a music video, was Thriller. Yeah, And Thriller blew me away with the effects. I was a child. It scared me, but I was like super into it. Um, and you, in my opinion, besides the transformation of Michael Jackson, you have one of the most iconic scenes in the entire Thriller, uh, which is right at the end with the laughter comes in from uh, Vincent Price and you turn and look at the camera and that's you in Thriller. Uh, can you tell us about that? Because that application was done by one of the legends who passed away quite a few years ago, Charles Schramm, who, if anybody doesn't know, 1939, Wizard of Oz, he's definitely known for the Cowardly Lion. Uh, how was that application done to you, and, and what was that process to be in something like that? Well, that, that was an old Halloween makeup I had, and he applied it, which was pretty cool. Absolutely. And all he kept saying, what he kept getting glue in my eyelash and saying, God, you've got the longest eyelashes I've ever seen on it. He just kept gluing them. And no, it was pretty fun. But anyway, uh, it was cool. I got, you know, Rick asked me to work on it. I got to do two or three of the main dancers, and then we all got to be in it. And the funny story about two funny stories. One, I didn't get to go to the screening at the theater when they had it and all my friends and Elaine and Rick and everybody were there and they're all, you know, seeing, watching the show and they're all going, Oh God, where's Greg? You know, he's not in here. <laughs> oh crap. You know? And then I guess at the very end, I show up with a big close up and they freeze on me and everything. And I guess now it's 3d. I pop out of the screen, which is pretty weird, but yes, I had that great big 
close up at the end and everybody was like damn it you know <laughs> a better shot than i did so everybody's <laughs> kind of pissed at that that i got that but uh the funny story about that was we were shooting that scene and the camera was there with the lights and John Landis was saying, okay, you have to hit these marks on the ground here. And I had these huge contacts in little tiny pupils and could hardly see. And he went up into a, you know, up into the sky on the camera with Dolly. And uh, he goes, okay, action, uh, fog. And three feet of fog rolls in. And I'm like, what? And I tried to hit the mark, but I couldn't see anything. The fog was so <laughs> thick. And uh, he came down. And he's cussing me out and screaming at me. And I, well, if I could see the effing marks, I guess I could hit them. And he's like, oh, well, that's not going to work. And he <laughs> just said, okay, you're going to just have to line it up with the lights and the camera. And <laughs> that was pretty funny. That's hilarious. Yeah, you don't think about that when uh, when you get the process going and you're like, okay, these are the marks. Obviously, you should hit them. And then you th throw fog into the matter. And then obviously, you have a face application on. Uh, your vision is probably blurred as well. That's probably a little difficult to hit a mark at that point. But Yeah, that. but it was great working on that. And then I forgot I was in it because it was so long ago and I've done so much <laughs> since. I forgot I was in it. And then I, uh, when he passed away, I looked up and saw that 10 million people had hit the thriller thing. And I went, oh, that's right, I'm in. <laughs> so, but yeah, that that's was a great crazy. experience. Yeah, it was, like I said, it was one of the ones that really impacted me in like, a, to me, it was a movie, obviously. It was done, yeah. it was created, it had the look, had a great story to it as well. And, you know, obviously anything that MJ did at that time was going to be, as you know, the highest pinnacle possible. So creating those characters really impacted quite a bit. And it, it had a lot of influence uh, from Night Living Dead and things of that nature. So, uh, but yeah, so having one of those impacts as a child, I mean, that your, your specific scene really did scare me as a child. <laughs> and it really oh, brought in, yeah, cause I was young, you know, but I was such a huge Michael Jackson kid, like at the time of everybody else probably. Uh, but yeah, so great, great job on that. I was like, it's one of my favorite, things that I knew about you is, is being in that. So it was fun working with Rick and, and it was funny because he'd like, I'd be sitting in the trailer and he walks up and he gives me an arm and he goes, this has to fall off on cue in the film where the guy's arm falls off. Yeah. And he goes, this works in 10 minutes, figure it out. And I was just, <laughs> and I got safety <laughs> pins and did a little pulley system with some, you know, wire, or the guy can mm -hmm. hold it behind him and just let go of it and it worked and you know it was that kind it's of stuff pretty fun yeah it's amazing what you could do even at, at that time frame and here we are you know so many years later the practical effects application is is very it's still to this day i think is 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 the dominant force even with the cgi which i don't feel is quite right i think the nice marriage of the yeah. two you know can happen I, I, you know as long as there's a nice marriage there so Oh, yeah. Uh, so I want to fast forward a little bit from Thriller. Um, you worked with the late and talented Mr. Robin Williams several times. Mm, uh, yes. And one of the, the things that I loved about Robin Williams is that he's able to express so much um, through anything. It didn't matter if he did, he did some even a couple kind of scary films as well, um, or, you know, Thriller type. But his loving, caring, charismaticness, his his always came through with his eyes and his expression and how he how he did things and and i'm jumping to i mean you did with hook bicentennial man mrs dalfire uh, but the thing that i really stood out to me that i wanted to focus on a little bit more was the aging process the natural aging process that you do, have done and you've done that quite often uh and not just in bicentennial man that's something that you're you, you have a, a very great knack for uh can you tell us about like Walk us through how the aging process on My Centennial Man, because you've done several people in that film, and what was the process for application? Do you, do you, I don't know what I'm trying, like, do you set it up correct differently than, say, creating a monster? And how much input does, you know, one have when it comes to figuring that out? Well, monsters you can have a lot of fun with. You can design, nobody knows. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You just design whatever you want. 
and uh, it's fun and you, so much freedom and everything. But age makeup, everybody knows what it looks like. Everybody, you know, it's it's got to be really good. And of course, I started with Rick, but I of course learned from Dick Smith. I mean, yeah, The Exorcist is what I just went. I have to do this, you know. That had so much influence, and that incredible makeup on Max von Sydow mm -hmm. was just the best and uh, no filters nothing and so i i i've never you know had art classes i had one in college and i could draw good and that's the last time i've ever drawn any it was wow. it was kind of boring to me mm -hmm. uh when i designed a makeup but what happened with age makeup i started doing it and i really have to have an eye for it and uh, I work with great sculptors who have helped me. I don't like doing the fine detail, the f wrinkles and the pores and everything, but I'm very good at designing a makeup and getting the shapes and forms and, every and making it work on a person's face. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm good at. And I've tried to do like Dick Smith, just become the best at it. And I've almost had a perfect film Benjamin Button was pretty close. Absolutely. But I'm still waiting for it. Vice was a perfect makeup. That thing, I worked with Chris Gallagher and everyone on it, and we applied it and didn't have much time. I thought it was a joke. They called me up. We want to turn him into Dick <laughs> Cheney. And I was just like, who is this? You know, what, you know, that's, and I just like, you're out of your minds. And they go, well, can we do it? And I go, I'd have to do a test. I don't know. You know, we did a quickie test in two weeks. And he had never worn a prosthetics before. And he was, Christian was like, can I turn my head in it? And I go, it's like skid. You, can, you know, it's so <laughs> don't worry about it. And he, he was, it was just supposed to be him looking a bit like Cheney for the film. And I did a test, and it was pretty good. He looked more like Chevy Chase than uh, <laughs> Cheney, but it was enough. And then we had, didn't have that much time, but really worked on it, got it down. I uh, worked with Brian Wade, helping me sculpt it and everything, and we got it down. And uh, it, it went through many phases, but I... I did a test finally and it looked really good. And I went you know, a week before shooting and I just went, I think this is it. And everybody liked it except Christian. Really? Christian just went, well, it's nice, but you know, I want to be fatter. I want more fat, fatter in the neck. I, I think it's going to be too fat. We didn't have time. So we had to, I, you know, sculpt a neck over the neck. <laughs> wow. Because we just didn't have time to redo every, we had I think five or six days, and so we sculpted a whole new makeup. And that Saturday we did the test on him, and I'm just like, I think it's too fat, and he's going. Oh. And we went up to the office, and he got the suit on, the glasses, the wig, everything, and he walked out, and we all just went, oh my god, mm -hmm. and he was so happy at that point because he was finally you know he was loving it so absolutely and at that point that was cool and then the movie was so good it's the best film i've ever worked on the director everybody was so fantastic amy adams uh, you know i did her makeup full uh just incredible incredible film and, and it turned out so good and people had no idea it was christian which is great because actors love that when they absolutely you know disappear in it. I was going to say, let's get to this fan question real quick, and I have something to yes. say about that. Um, so this is from Taryn McQueen. It says, when working on the Lost Boys, what was the design process like, knowing you were essentially redesigning vampires for a more modern horror audience? Well, at the time, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. I'm <laughs> Somebody else had done test makeups. V came to me and said, they're unhappy with the tests. They want more stylized. The, these actors are good looking models kind of, and they want them, they don't want monsters. They want 
sexy vampire type things. And so, uh, you know, and I, <laughs> they'd, I think they'd already started shooting some of it up in the Santa Clara and that. And uh, I, uh, I had a picture. I had years before a newspaper had faded. It was a faded photograph of this good looking blonde tennis player in the sports section. And it, it was his face and it had faded so much that it gave him this weird bone structure. Oh, okay. Very subtle, but it was weird. And I went, oh, that's interesting. I'm going to use that one day. And so I got that out, found it, and then I stylized it more. And I did a test, flew to England. I had the contacts made there, flew to England, picked up the contact lenses, flew back, did a test on Monday with Kiefer and uh, very first test. And then they liked it. And uh, the thing I hated about makeups like Star Trek and that that always bothered me was they always do big forehead pieces, but they never do anything here. Mm. And Kiefer had a beard I had to work around, but I was very intent on designing it so that it had the structure on the forehead, of course, that nose piece, but then it also had pieces down here that tied into it. So it kind of gave, you know, more of a whole look to it. And the teeth, I, he didn't want giant fangs. He wanted beautiful pearl-like teeth. And so I did that. And then they really liked the makeup test V and I did. And then, uh, but he said, uh, the director, Schumacher said, uh, I think uh, it's too subtle. Let's make key for more. Mm. So I used that makeup in it on uh, the brother, the older brother. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, okay, Michael. Yeah. Michael, at the end. I used that makeup on him at the end. Gotcha. And then I did a more stylized on Kiefer, so he had a little stylized. And I mean, I, I it, it was terrifying because Joel Schumacher is a very scary person. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that, actually. <laughs> oh, and I was just, like, staying away from set. I just was, like, terrified and... <laughs> We did the test. They started shooting, and he called me in one day, and I went, oh, crap. And then I went in, and he goes, I have to tell you, Michael, the cinematographer who's incredible, who did Dracula, too. And they said, we have to tell you, we were never going to shoot these makeups unless from the waist up. We were never going to go in for close-ups. And these makeups are so beautiful that we're doing extreme close-ups and everything. And I just wow. went, <laughs> I walked away and I was like, you know, yeah, happy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's you know, an honor. I made, I mean, made my day, and it, and like I said before, look how it's turned out. I, who knew it was going to become such a classic? Absolutely. You know, those, I think the makeup still hold up. The movie, the music, everything. Beautiful film. So you, you just never know. You never know how it's going to work. So you know, uh, you know, one thing I noticed on that, and and you kind of touched on it with Kiefer, um, with you said about the nice teeth and everything. You know, the the whole look of the vampires that you created, it was almost, it kind of weird to say this, but kind of angelic in some ways. Uh, they were they were attractive vampires, if that makes sense. You know, and that's what I tried to do. I tried to put a lot of sex into that makeup. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and it was. And yeah. I think I succeeded. That's why I have no sex life. I put it all into the makeup. So, <laughs> That's great. That's how it uh, works. You know, going back real quick, I want to touch on two things. One, um, the aging process with with uh, Bicentennial Man um, and then Mrs. Dalfire with Robin Williams as well. One thing that I was saying earlier about Robin Williams is that regardless of what he did, I mean, he really expressed every character. And one thing that I loved about Mrs. Dalfire, I mean, let's be real, Mrs. Dalfire and Robert Williams, he, he doesn't make a, a beautiful older lady. But what makes great about Mr. Dalfire is that um, your application and the way he expressed himself through his eyes uh, really made that makeup powerful. And you fell in love with that character, Mr. Dalfire. I think you're that. You know, how much of that process when it comes to working with Robin was he involved in different applications in his, his say on that? Because, you know, it's always better, I would say, that an actor has more input and less when it comes to the makeup. Well, that film, and once again, no time. Mm -hmm. uh, but 
uh, it was a great script and every it was a nasty script. The 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 courtroom scenes and the neighbor there were really evil, nasty stuff in that movie. Mm -hmm. And luckily with him, uh, you know, coming up with stuff in that it beca it was became so funny. Who knew? I just remember sitting in that first audience, watching it, and the, the audience was dying, and I was just more watching the audience because I was shocked how funny it was and how they were dying watching it and uh but that started out where they asked me to do it and Robin was a producer and his wife at the time and the producers uh you know they they wanted to try makeups which like is in the film V tried some makeups and I did some makeups in the beginning but I I showed a picture of this woman I found in a book from the Midwest and she just had that face and it was beautiful. It's not exactly what he turned into, but it, the hair and everything is what influenced me. I said, this is how he should look. We can't do Tootsie again where we just put some makeup on him sure. with his face. Everybody's going to know it's Robin. Can't do it. And so they said, well, we can't have him in three hours of makeup a day. And Raman goes, I don't mind if it works, you know? Mm -hmm. And so uh, we sculpted, we did three different designs. And uh, the one I sculpted is the one that's in the film. The, uh, um, oh God, what's his name? Uh, the sculpt helped me, Mitch Devane worked on that with me and uh, it, we did a test <laughs> a week before shooting started and uh, I had contacts in him, Hazel, get rid of his blue eyes. And he was so different looking in the test. And I also, I did the makeup that first time and showed V what I was doing and how I did age spots and did more realistic makeup. And then mm -hmm. uh, it was decided the lenses, he was so different looking that couldn't connect with them as much. So we just got rid of the lenses so you could see his blue eyes in there. And then V uh, at the beginning of shooting took it and softened it, the makeup down to more of a beauty makeup softened, you know, without the spots and everything and, and made it work. And it, it you know, it's who knew on that. Right. <laughs> and I think he's got a different, He's got a difficult face. He doesn't have much room for his nose. His mouth is wide, that jaw trying to yeah. get. And yet I, I think I sculpted in about four or five hours. I roughed it out to where that's what it is. You know, that's how it usually works the last minute. <laughs> and Hannibal, that's the winner. If I can just throw in a thing about Hannibal, Gary Oldman, who's just the best. Uh, when I designed that, we worked on that for months and it looked like zombies and everything. And then they started shooting and I fl they finally got Gary on it. And I flew over to it Italy with Glenn Hans and uh, took a head cast of him. And Ridley goes, I've changed my mind. I want him to look like a diseased fetus with a little pixie nose. And I'm like, are you out of your mind? You know? Right. <laughs> and we're in Italy, and in one day, I sculpted that. And wow. one day, Glenn Hans worked on it, finishing it off real quick, showed it to Ridley, and he goes, that's it. And I came back, and I went, this is... So I took a piece, I broke his jaw, moved his jaw over and took a piece and put it just to make it more interesting. And, you know, you never know. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> You know, speaking, speaking, of, uh, speaking of Gary Ullman, there was actually a fan question. We're going to bring that up right now uh, regarding Dracula. Uh, so let's yeah. bring it up. It's from Charles. Uh, how was the decision made to go with an aged gothic Dracula instead of the traditional Bela Lugosi look or the minimalist image of Nosferatu in Francis Ford Coppola's film? Well, I was hired on just to do the old age makeup. That was it. And gotcha. I don't like repeating things when I do films like uh, Fright Night 2 and that, Fright Night, Fright Night 2, was it? Those werewolves, I just do weird stuff. I don't want to recreate what's been done before. Yeah. And with Dracula, and the hard part about that age makeup, and then then we added in the bat creature later and the wolf creature, and it, you know, it, it, it became a huge deal. But uh, the old age makeup, 
I, when I, I sculpted one first, I got about my 100 year old Indians, Native American Indians book they have. And I sculpted this great old, because he was like supposed to be like 500 years old. Mm -hmm. And so I sculpted it and I went, well, it looks nice, but it doesn't look like Gary. And that's the hardest thing about age makeup is to make it look like the person. So I threw that out completely. I got his head cast, got his head cast and I looked at it under light. I drew pencil lines where he was aging, where you can see, and even young people, you can really look at their face cast and you can see where they're all starting to age. Hmm. things, little things, but you can see it. And I really concentrated on him and what I could see in that. And then I have many head casts of famous actors and other old people. And I go through them and I look at them and see how interesting they are. And I might use part of them here, somebody else a neck, forehead, you know, and everything. And then I just really try to get it look like the person. That's the hardest thing to do. And that's why you see so many makeups still to this day that don't look like the actor. Mm -hmm. in it. it doesn't work. And I, I just, some reason, I don't know why, I'm just good at shapes and forms and taking a person's face and being able to sink them in, even when they got a full young face, I can sink them in. And if that's all Dick Smith stuff, man, he, he was so, the hardest part of an old age makeup is right here, trying to get this right around the mouth and everything. And nobody does it right. And uh, he, man, he on Forever Young with Mel Gibson, he sculpted a design which wasn't used in the film, but his design, which is, you can see in his sculptures and everything where he comes down and comes in here and then down here with all the, you know, it, he, he was so good at that. And, I, and that's where I learned. Um, wow. I mean, what an amazing, um, you know, ability to learn from Dick Smith, first of all, one of the masters. Oh. I mean, the guy, uh, I, I had a pleasure meeting him one time for like a brief kind of bump in at Monster Palooza and, in LA once and uh, one of the most like soft spoken, humble men that I've ever met. And his, his makeup to this day is a pinnacle for, for many people. And I think you nailed it correctly when it came to like aging makeup, there's a lot of examples of bad aging makeup and there's a few great examples and, and you definitely Dick and yourself are in that pinnacle. So uh, that's amazing to have that kind of connection. So uh, we're going to get to another fan question real quick. Sure. All right. So this is from uh, Jay. Uh, you've done Vice and Hoffa and Lost Boys and Dracula. Which do you prefer and which holds more challenges making an actor look like a known real life person or a monster character? Well, they're both different. That's what I love about this is that I'll do one film and it's old age and I really try to nail it and get it down and do it. Then the next film is vampire film and I get to have fun with it and design stuff and then a werewolf film and then monster. It's just all over the place and it's different and it keeps it really interesting. Um, what was the question again? <laughs> That's pretty back here, Jay. Uh, his question is, uh, oh, what's your favorite? Okay. The uh, so, real life person, like, monster. and they're all different. Hoffa, I got on that, and they were like, uh, "He doesn't want, he doesn't want, a, he wants a nose tip. He doesn't want anything up here." Hmm. I designed it, and I gave it to V, and I went here. I've designed it up here because <laughs> this is where it needs to be. If he doesn't like it. I'm not doing a nose tip. It won't work. It's ridiculous. So I did a piece here. He applied it to him and he goes, that's what I wanted the whole time. You know, nice. so I just went, I do, I do what I want. <laughs> I, because I think I know what looks good. Mm -hmm. And I, of course, listen to the actor and the director. And the actor has a lot of input. Like in Vice, Man Christian had so much input on that makeup and the character. And it was great. I love that in that, but it still comes down to, I'm the one who 
got to please myself. Absolutely. So they're all different. Dracula was a, just a, it just turned out to be incredible. The, the makeups and the bat creature. I, when I did the bat creature, I, we had four weeks to create that in because it was supposed to be a big sword fight scene where they break into the room and he's with Winona and he grabs his cloak and wraps it around him because he's naked. And then they did a big sword fight he wanted. And so Gary came to me and said, what if they break in, the windows open, they think I left, I come down from the ceiling as this creature with skin hanging and everything. And I went, that's cool. Why don't you ask Coppola about it and I'll design. And myself and Glenn Hans, I think it was three days, came up with a maquette Mm -hmm. of uh, the creature. And I showed it to Coppola and he goes, I have to have it. (laughs) And so they were going to tear the set down to do the mausoleum set in four weeks. So we had four weeks. Stuart Ardingstall did all the hair work. Glenn Hahn sculpted the body. And then I sculpted the face and designed it. I designed the, you know, those cool elephant type skin coming down and the long arms. I designed all that and worked with Glenn. We sculpted it, bashed it out. And it, when I got it on Gary, I just felt like, oh my God, I created one of Hollywood's great monster character suits creatures you know and that was pretty cool so that was just a they're all different and that's the fun part to me is trying to solve them Mm. and make it work absolutely you know and you 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 nailed it with uh you know dracula you know coppola i've seen it and read in interviews that he really 100% 100% wanted to make that film practical effects. He wanted to really showcase that. Well, that was Coppola. And that was all Coppola. And that movie. Yeah, there, I don't want effect. any visual effects in this film. I want it all practical. And it was. And then we even designed, we designed makeup. So you never even saw that we did one of Winona where she was in a full suit, body suit of veins. Wow. That she was going to wear under her nightgown that when he looked at her, all he saw was this pulse which they did a little bit with visual effect but uh we that she refused to wear it made her look fat so whatever (laughs) but whatever (laughs) whatever and then at the end i did this cool thing with veins on gary's face where they're going to time lapse it like the old days where he when he dies and becomes young again Mm -hmm. but then at that point he did it digitally you know, Coppola, he oh, just said no digital stuff. And then he, at the end, he did put some in and everything. And it, that was a hard film to do because at one point, Coppola, I don't want any teeth, no vampire teeth. And I went, well, they're vampires. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> and at one point he goes, no blood in the film. And wow. I'm just like, oh my God. And then, so that's why I came up with those teeth when they look in her oh, mouth. Yeah. You see the little teeth up in there because I figured, well, if you saw those up in there, you knew at some point they would come down or something. That's how why that's in the film. And then then towards the end, he just went, I want blood. There's not enough blood in this. And then you saw the bedroom with the blood blasting all of it. Blood, (laughs) blood, blood, and teeth. And, you know, so you just, strange, but you go with it. He was a great director because he would... He painted, it was so easy for me to design that film because he sat there for hours showing us painting old films and things he wanted to use from old films and do and just designing it that it really came easy for me because of what he expressed he wanted, you know, and it was, it turned out to be so easy. And Dick Smith at the beginning just went, He's going to fire you. You know, you're never going to last. <laughs> and I was like, and then I saw Hearts of Darkness and I was like, oh no. <laughs> How did I get myself into? But, yeah, here it is today, one of the greatest. But what you know, a beautiful film. You know, Aiko's designs, her costumes. Absolutely. <laughs> and award winning for yourself as well. Yeah. I mean, it was cool. Pretty cool. You know, one thing uh, that I loved about Dracula, and, and I want to touch on with Gary Ullman, because obviously you worked on him on Hannibal as well. And, uh, you know, Gary Ullman 
his ability to change back and forth. Actually, let's get to this fan question because this is about Gary. How many hours was Gary Ullman's makeup to do? It depended. I mean, the bat creature I devised, that's what you have to do when you're a makeup artist too. You can't, you have to think about it as a makeup on an actor. So I devised it where we did the head makeup and then we could take the teeth out. I'd taken a cast of him with his teeth in, so it pushed his mouth out to really get rid of his nose. He couldn't breathe through his nose, which wasn't easy for him. You know, I tried to cut some little holes in there, but, and then the contacts and those huge teeth and that makeup and the suit, you know, he would occasionally freak out because it was just so much, you know. Very claustrophobic. I totally understand. But I made it. I could get him out of the suit, special blending pieces and everything. I could get him in and out of the suit in five to ten minutes. We had to stay in the makeup all day without the teeth in and the eyes and everything. And then we could get him back in that suit in ten minutes completely. Wow. I mean, it was really well thought out. And we had four weeks come up with that whole thing so you have to think of that too on how it's going to be on the actor but gary is the best and he loves makeup mm -hmm. i mean on hannibal when he walked in he finally they hired him on and i went oh he's gonna let me clamp his eye open <laughs> he walked in and he goes is there a way of clamping my eye open and i went oh yeah <laughs> and it was very dangerous and we had to be very careful and one time the we shot for two weeks and we would put him in that makeup and I had, you know, a piece of tape on his eye, silk, that went up into the eyebrow and we opened the hair up and vacuum, you know, stick it down, Velcro, and then we had a wire that came down under here, Wes Wofford device, came down and wrapped on his chest. So when we went to shoot him every day in that makeup, and he had a contact lens and uh, we had to put drops in every minute. I mean, yeah, eye dries out. Right? We do the scene, and as they're shooting it, as soon as it ended or whatever, we he'd walk in and put drops in his eye. And we shot for two weeks like that, and wow. very careful. And when there was one day when he didn't put drops in, and his guy got a little red, and I just like, you know. So we would start that where they'd start rolling the camera for the scene and we'd go in and then pull his eye up and everything and attach it. And as soon as cut, we'd go in and loosen it all. Wow. And so, and it worked very well. And Gary, you know, tied more and more. And I'm, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so it worked and it was a very clever makeup and how I got rid of his eyelashes and everything. And, you know, I wanted it to, be a modern day Frankenstein makeup, basically. I wanted it so disturbing that people would go, ooh, you know, and be shocked by it. And I I, th I think it worked really well. I was so happy with that film. And then the end with the brain, eating the brains and all that, I never thought that would make it to the screen. And when we saw it, the screening, we were all like, oh, oh, crap. oh geez, you know. And it made it, you never know. And that the other interesting thing about that, I'll talk real quick, um, yeah, no is uh, there was a scene where he guts a guy, uh, what's his name, Handel, he guts the guy and throws him over the balcony and he hits the, and all the guts go into the street. Those are all, I forget how old those buildings are and the fresco paint on them and everything, centuries old. And so we couldn't use blood because it could stain everything. Yeah. Piece of history. Like, yeah. Oh crap, what are we gonna do? And I came up with using a uh, clear uh, the um, the sugar water. What is that? Caro syrup. Caro syrup, yeah. Clear caro syrup and put in the fibers the uh, that they use on Christmas trees, soca flock or whatever it's called. Yeah. The blood red soca flock in there which made it look just like thick, goopy blood. It just splattered everywhere, and then they just hosed it down and it didn't stain anything. Because, uh, you, you know, you have to think about that kind of stuff, so. Absolutely, because it's a tainted part of history that you can uh, obviously mess up <laughs> tremendously, you know? <laughs> I, yeah, I wouldn't want to. Years later, oh, there's the stain I made. Exactly. 
<laughs> you know, one thing uh, that I wanted to touch on, uh, I want to get into vice real quick. Yes. Um, you know, one thing that I need to clarification on that isn't vice related, but with Gary Ullman, I read that he had to shave his, uh, his forehead for Dracula. Was that correct on the old piece with the, that is his actual forehead uh, application. They actually shave his hair up to here. Actors will shave whatever, you know. I mean, it's dedication to Cheney, it. ridiculous. Cheney, I did the 21 year old makeup on him, and there was some digital work in that, which is fine with me. I'm all for it. I'm called Fan in India, Shahrukh Khan did a heavy, uh, making him look young and printing it with half makeup, half digital. Really fun and hard. And, but, uh, but Gary, you know, yeah, he shaved his head back for a certain a lot of wigs in that of course and yeah. then cheney we shot him 21 we the very first thing we shot was uh with the, his crew cut on christian oh. okay. and all that and i made him look young did a young makeup and then they touched him up digitally a little bit and then once they made sure the film was good and everything they he just shaved his whole head wow he shaved it every day and uh that saved you know half hour or more right there with a stupid ball. I hate ball caps. Yeah, ball caps are. You, no, you I would say most of the time they're not done right, anyways. <laughs> well, I've used uh, rubber ones, which you can't get the rubber anymore or anything. But I, I use them like in a uh, um, a Brad Pitt. I do bald pates, which take a lot less time, and it was a rubber bald cap, and he's got. To, and I would sit there and I would glue his hair down. And I usually go through it with uh, um, uh, hair slick mm, first. Gotcha. But that'll sweat out. So, and then I always, the half inch in the front, and I use spirit gum on it and mat it down. I might even put a lace piece across, uh, just lace, hair lace to flatten it down and things. Uh, now they're using that tape a lot, which yeah. works really well. But, uh, but I swear. Every shot in that film on Benjamin on uh, Benjamin Button, I would glue it down, spirit gum. Two hours later, right here, his hair would pop up. <laughs> There'd be a little boom there, and every shot we'd have to go in and press it down with a puff, and the whole film. I don't know why. Right, this little spot here, his hair would just boop. <laughs> like Will, Will Smith's ears in Ali. Every exactly. makeup I've ever done, trying to get those ears down to yeah. stay. It took me six weeks to figure that out. And it's so complicated, but it worked finally, you know? You know, with, with and bias. It's like, it's like white chick, chicks. Oh, yes. Trying to do white chicks and come up with a spray to because they were wearing bikinis in the film and trying to come up with that pale color on their skin. I thought it was going to be easy and it didn't work. We tried everything. We got professional body makeup people and it didn't work. And I had to come up with these new colors of PAX paints and that because we, we didn't have a lot of, we didn't have any of the PPI stuff yet. The, uh, you know, so we had to use PAX paints and we got ten thousand dollars worth of color stay from revlon i think which went over at the last but i came up with these bright yellow oranges and colors counteract it because everything would go gray again and i you just don't think about that when you take these films until you get into it so wow you know it's you know, it's, it's always a challenge but that to me is what's so much fun about all this I because mean, if, I, if it wasn't, no, I was going to say, if it wasn't fun, you wouldn't have had a career that's lasted yeah. 40 plus years, you know, and that's. And I'm still doing it. And exactly. because of the Oscar, I didn't work for two years before that at all. And I just thought, oh, God. I'm done. And, I just, <laughs> and then I get that call and that turns out so good that I've gotten so many calls and I'm doing really we're doing one right now. It, with Ryan Murphy and it, cool. And we just did a test makeup before we got locked up and uh, it worked great. And it's, it's just so there's nothing like it when a makeup works. 
and everybody is just like, how do you do that? I mean, <laughs> the director in Vice, oh God, crap, I'm forgetting his name. Anyway, he, he just, I walked on set and he'd go, how do you do this? How do you do? And he goes, are you a witch? How do you do this? I go, I'm simply a makeup artist. And because in person, I, what was so cool about that makeup in person, you could not tell it was makeup. Yeah, that's if actually what I was going to say. Like, you were standing next to him, you would never know that was makeup. You could not tell it was makeup. And that's what told me. I didn't do any research on Vice when I when I first watched it, and I knew Christian Bell obviously is very dedicated to roles. I mean, he looks almost deadly sick in mechanics, and uh, you know has gone to being, you know, from super skinny to buff Batman to this. So when I watched it, I honestly thought that he gained the weight for the film. That's how effective that movie was, and how the makeup that you did. And, uh, you know, I just want to say I can go on for hours. Me and you, I could probably talk to you for hours, but we have to wrap it up. We have to. Oh. I'm sorry. Uh, but, yeah, we're, we're almost done here. Yeah, we're, we're wrapping up. So we can talk next. about Benjamin Button. I know, we barely got into it, but let's have you back, next Greg. Time. Yeah, let's have, let's have you back because it was a pleasure. Greg, you have, uh, man, I'm going to say a legacy that's going to outlive more makeup people in, in this day and age. And I appreciate your time. You truly have been an inspiration for me uh, personally, uh, but also I think for the entire world, you gave us a lot of gifts that bring us joy and we don't even realize it until we have interviews like this to go and say thank you to you. So thank you for your time and for what you've thank done. You. Thank you. I've been very lucky and got to create these incredible, worked on these incredible films with incredible actors and crew and everybody. and. Yeah, I'm very, very, very lucky, and I know it. So, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. about five years left, I hope. I, I hope a lot more, man. I mean, you've been you've been killing for a long time, and I appreciate everything you've done. I can't wait to see once we get all this, you know, after place over to see what your next project is that you kind of touched on. And uh, yeah, we'll definitely have you back at, at a later time because I definitely want to get into more conversation with you. So, I appreciate it, Greg. Thank you. Great. Thank you.